The following audio brought to you by TSF Entertainment Podcast may contain graphic descriptions of violence and or audio clips of violence or sexual explicit events. Listener's discretion is advised. What's up, everyone? It's your boy Retro CG, and welcome you to the TSF Entertainment Podcast. On today, I am joined by my beautiful co-host, Miss Really B TV. Hey. And today we're going to be doing something a little different than what we normally do on our podcast. Um, today we're going to be talking about the mysterious death of Mr. Alonzo Brooks. Mm-hmm. So, um, this really hit me hard. Um, when I first saw this um, show, I definitely knew that we needed to cover it on the podcast. Um, Brooks' death was featured on the fourth episode, um, which is titled No Ride Home, on oh, the mm-hmm. Netflix reboot of the Unsolved Mysteries. Right, 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 right. And after seeing how hurt and angry and upset his family was, I just I knew we had to talk about this, in, especially in light of what's going on in the world today. Right. I felt like this was a case that we definitely needed to discuss. Because we both realized that like on top of certain like we ha- no, have other things in common and we both love like the ID channel and true crime and you actually sent me this. You were like, are you watching Unsolved Mysteries? And I was like, nah, I ain't got around to it yet. And you actually sent me this. And like, it was crazy when I saw it. I, I, I'm I'm just... I've seen a lot of publicity over yeah, this. Yeah, which I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad. To I'm, see I'm that. very glad for it. Yes, I knew that we had to get in on this. So um, I'm going to do something a little different tonight. I'm going to start the uh, show off with um, just an excerpt from the episode. Um, well, we one of the tonight. things that kind of um, <laughs> touched me the most. Okay. Well, you know, I got to try to do something different a little bit here. And there. I'm, listen, I'm here for it. You know, I'm here for it. So. This was tragic for our family. I want answers now. It's been 15 years. It's too long. That town still had not say anything. And the people and the kids don't say shit. And I still wonder why. So just hearing how upset and angry his mother is, it just, it touched me. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really took me to a space. Um, so a little background on the case. Um, on May the 1st, 2004, the body of Alonzo Brooke was found in Lassine, Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it was about a month after he was reported missing. He went missing on um, April the 3rd, 2004. And the crazy part about his whole disappearance is the circumstances surrounding it. Um, he the case was investigated by the FBI, and they were trying to determine whether or not he was a victim of a hate crime. Which, as we get into the details of the case, to me it seems more and more like it was you know he was targeted for um, a hate crime. Mm-hmm. Um, Alonzo Tyree Brooke was born May the 19th, 1980 to Mr. Billy Brooks Sr. and Maria Ramirez. He's a native of Topeka, Kansas, and he was born African-American and Mexican descent. So at the time of his disappearance and death, he was 23 years old. He was working as a custodian. Um, I'm just... I'm I'm just stuck on the whole the whole situation. So on the night of April the third, he traveled with three of his so-called friends hmm. to a party that was in Lacing, which was approximately about an hour away from where he lives. 
um, at the party, you know, in, in the episode, you know, some of his friends, you know, and that's another thing that bothers me. All three of them were at the same party, but all three of them have a, a inconsistent or different account of what happened that night at the party. Um, but so much doesn't make sense. Even starting from there, let's just start there. What what do you think even prompted him to go to this party? And I don't mean a kid going to a party. That's normal. But these weren't like his. It was almost like he had two sets of friends because his black friends didn't even know these guys. They were like, we we don't even Correct. know them like that. So that Correct. that sort of threw up a red flag for me because. Even if you don't run in the same circles at that age, your friends in and in that small of an area, like they weren't in a major metropolitan area, you at least know of each other. Like y'all may not be best friends or whatever, but but they were like, we didn't even know these, we didn't even know these these guys. So and then where they were going was a well known area to be, you know, pretty much a you know black folk ain't welcome here type situation. So what what do you think even prompted him to? That was my first, that was the first thing that sort of threw up a red flag for me was, why did he even go to this party? Okay, so that that was something that was, I was curious about as well. And the way I have kind of diagnosed it is that, okay, maybe this was Alonzo's football friends. Maybe he okay. played football with these guys. Maybe. So, okay. you know, we all have different sets of friends. And sometimes our, our friends don't always, you know, cross paths, you know. I have different sets of friends in my lives. However, just about all of my friends know of my other sets of friends. They and that's what I mean. Head. Like, they know of, you may not know them, but you know of them, especially, again, they lived in a small, like a rural type area. Correct. Like, Topeka is not like a major metropolitan area. So that's ahead. odd for me. That's that, that whole situation is odd for me because I I don't know. Sometimes, you know, our friendships get a little distance in between them. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you're live, you're doing life and you're doing your thing. I'm doing life and I'm doing my thing. So sometimes, you know, we may not always, you know, hang out as regularly as we used to, but you know, the, the temperature between Rodney and his white set of friends seems very different. They weren't parallel. You know, they didn't know of each other. You know, that was the first time they ever met. So it was just kind of odd that, you know, Alonzo would have called Rodney up and said, hey, come to this party with me or whatever the case may be. Yeah. I don't know. Um, in the case, they stated that it was kind of a last minute thing that he decided to go. So I don't know if he just said, you know what, you know, I'm bored at home tonight, it's Saturday night. You know, let's go out and have a good time. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. The case I mean, may it could be. just be innocent. I just it just. But that was the first thing when I was listening to the story after not in the beginning, but at the end, when you start hearing all the other information that they add to it, then it's kind of like. Okay, I don't even understand why he even went to this daggone party. But right. hindsight is always twenty twenty. Maybe, you know, when they're presenting the information to us, we hear it differently than if you're living in that area, you're living in that moment. You know, like you said, it could have been something as simple as they called him up and was like, yo, we're going to this party, you want to roll? And he was bored and he was like, sure, let's go. You know what I mean? You're right. It could have been just that simple. But in hindsight, as I'm listening to everything i was just like oh my gosh like what the heck but anyway but keep going i'm sorry I'm <laughs> no you're good caught up too early you're good uh one of the biggest oddity of the situation is you know alonzo didn't have prearranged transportation it seems like nobody kind of had prearranged transportation it was like you know we get there you know we're going to meet up there right whatever the case may be so his friend justin comes by the house and picks him up and say, you know, let's head out to the party. So he lets his mom know, you know, I'm headed out for the night. I'm going to a party. She was like, where are you going? You know, and the crazy part about it is they didn't even know the person that the party was being thrown for. It was someone that was supposed to be allegedly leaving to go to the military. Right. You know, they were going out for a celebration. And that's that part thing is that's common for me. Well, I well guess see, for me, common, for me, that I was pretty common. A party. As a teenager, as a te like now I would never do that. But as a teenager, we all just like, yo, it's a party. I, I went to plenty of parties with people I ain't know. Somebody invited me. I heard about it. Like I, I ain't gonna lie, I've done that a million times. Well, as a kid, I've done that a million times. Like as an adult, I would never do that. You know, I, I, I would have to agree with that. I guess where I'm looking at it now, um, I guess you're right. Maybe when I was 23, I probably yeah, when I was younger, yeah. Um, now that I'm 40, <laughs> it's a big difference. Yeah, but, when I was, uh, a, I wouldn't yeah. go to a party for someone I didn't know. 
And secondly, I wouldn't go to a party with friends that are just casual friends of mine. Now, if these were close friends of mine, best friends, then, you know, I'm good because they may know the person that um, the party's being had for. Okay, that's cool. You know, as long as the, yeah. my people know who, who we are going to hang out with, that's cool. But you know how we are as adults right now. You know, I'm not going anywhere unless I know the temperature. Oh, yeah. As an adult, of, I'm definitely, shoot. Of the environment that I'm finna be around, you know. What I'm about to say, as an I'll adult, I might not even. You know, yeah, what kind of crowd it's finna be, you know, let me size the situation up before right. I, I decide to go parlay with people that I don't know. Shoot, as an adult, but, I might not even go to my best friend's party if I don't feel like being bothered. Like, you know, as an adult. It's just a different mindset. <laughs> it is a different mindset. Um, so they arrive at the party, which, like I said, is an hour away from where they live. Um, Alonzo seems to be, um, and it was kind of alluded to, that he was the older of the crew. You know, mm-hmm. that he was of age. He was 23, so I'm assuming that the rest of them were probably like 19, 20, 18, 19, 20, somewhere around that age group. Um, Alonzo's probably the one that provides the beer and cigarettes, you know, because he probably. instantly gets out and says, hey, you know, who wants a beer? So, you know, there's drinking involved. So we know that there's drinking involved. There's probably drinking involved prior to the party. And so he arrives at the party and, you know, he begins mingling with the party goers or the guests at the party and one of the friends accounts that uh, instantly he gets into it with you know someone at the party you know that this racial is, yeah. slurs are starting to be thrown around mm-hmm. and, you know, and this is the part that stuck with me but go ahead this is the part that stuck with me the whole time but go ahead this is what made me be like I ain't fucking with these friends but I'm sorry I'm gonna shut up go ahead <laughs> <laughs> uh, racial slurs are thrown around and then there's a slight altercation or a scuffle and one of the friends steps in and breaks up the scuffle. Okay, mm-hmm. instant red flag for me. Instant red flag for me. Okay, so if the situa- if I was in that situation and I saw that one of my friends who's a minority in this situation, okay, is getting into it with people and I see that the crowd is not really feeling the fact that, you know, my friend is here. So if it was a, a white friend of mine and I took them to a party with me and I saw that, you know, they were uncomfortable or that, you know, people weren't receptive to my friend being there at the party, I'm going to be like, yo, let's be out. You know, this Especially ain't a good Especially remember they said it was another party. And remember they said it was another party going on in their town with people they knew. Remember that part? Yes. Where another friend was like, yo, I was at such and such party. Like, you had other options if y'all wanted. I would, I'm the same way. First thing, I'd have been out. Like, we would have left. There's no way I would have stayed. Because, I mean, we're we not there five minutes and you got into it and it was over something racial. And remember, they said he was the only black kid there. So for that, to me, as good friends, I don't care how old they are. At this point, you see, if you've had to go step in and break up a scuffle, you're already kind of like an oddball here. All of you are uh, apparently an oddball at this party. Y'all don't know anybody here at this party. And the first thing that pops off is drama. Nah, let's be out. You know, yeah, let's, we gotta let's head on yeah. back to it's Gardner, like, we, where we where we live. Right. Let's go to this other party, and then right. this, the, subsequently, each one of his three friends that went to the party with them, they all came in separate cars. That's another thing that I find all right. Why all all of them just didn't get in one car and go, but all three of them arrive in different vehicles, and one by one they all start to leave. Forty five yep. after you've drove an hour to a party, and then. You know what? You get here, you're not feeling the vibe. Whatever reason, because none of the friends really stated why they left. All of them. Well, the one guy said he left because he ran out of cigarettes. Well, that that's the last one. That was the one he rode with. But the other two, they left prior to. It's like, oh, someone said there was another party back home. You know, we're heading out. Whatever. Why didn't you go get the rest of your friends that came with you and say, yo, we're getting ready to head out. We're heading to this party. Why would y'all just leave? Why would y'all leave and not check in and say, hey, you know, we're going to go to this other party. Y'all want to roll with us. At least there would have been an option. And if Alonzo would have decided to stay and if him and Justin wanted to stay at this party and the rest of the friends go, okay, I could have understood that. But for all of them to leave one by one, it just, that was odd. And so um, his friend Justin He's the one I have a major issue with. He's the one I call I call bullshit on his whole story. I the call other two, the other guys, everything. I'm right. The other guys, I'm like maybe, but him, I call bullshit on his whole 
story? I think that everything that he has reported as happening that night is a direct contradiction of what actually probably happened. And it's his way. And I think he knows that everyone's probably going to look at him the hardest because you are the person that drove him there. You are the person that left him there. And so Justin um, pretty and much didn't says, tell nobody. Didn't, and didn't tell, tell nobody. nobody. And didn't tell nobody. And then Justin go ahead and um and states that you know he went to Alonzo to get a cigarette. Alonzo had ran out of cigarettes. He had ran out of cigarettes. So he was leaving to go get cigarettes. So if that would be me and you are at a party, I want to come to you and be like, "Yo, Crystal, hey, I don't ran out of cigarettes. You want to ride with me to the store? Let's go get some cigarettes." There's no way I leave you, especially knowing. That you had already had a racial run in. You and the only rest of our black friends are now gone. The party. <laughs> and the, the rest of our friends are now black gone. Kid there. It's no way in hell I leave you at that party. No. No way. Even if you say, yo, I'm talking to this chick, yo, she feeling me. I'm like, you're gonna ride with me and we'll come back. Like she'll be get her phone number. Like, I'm not leaving you there. Under those circumstances, it'd be different if it was a regular situation. You was making friends. You was having a good time. I'm going to hit you with the head nod and be like, yo, I'm running to the store. You need anything. I'm still going to let you know that I'm leaving. And I'm like, you need anything. And let you tell me, yo, I'm good. But knowing that you already had a run in with somebody there, it didn't even have to be racial. If we went to a party and five minutes into the party, you was about to get into a fight. And we don't know these people. We're in their area. They're all friends. We don't really know them. We don't even know who's hosting this damn party. I'm not doing it. Like, that's crazy to me. That, yeah, that, that was... didn't make no... The minute he said it, I was like, bullshit. Yeah. And then the crazy part about it is you know that the rest of our friends have left, so I'm now leaving you here completely by yourself, not knowing anyone. And just like you said, within five, ten minutes of us arriving at the party, there's been an altercation, and now I feel like it's it's okay. Everything is cooled down. Everything nah. is straight now that I can leave. People are drinking, store. which means it's making it worse. They probably were smoking weed or doing some other stuff. That means that the more people drink, the later it gets. Whatever they was already feeling when I walked in the door is going to start getting amplified. Okay. So it gets worse. It gets worse. Oh, it gets so worse. So at this point, <laughs> Justin leaves. He leaves. He's going to the store to get cigarettes. Okay. He gets lost, allegedly. He gets lost on the way to the store. Allegedly. Now, mind you, we're talking about 11, 12 o'clock at night. They they all claim they all pretty much stated that this was a small town, you know, one grocery store, one red light type small town. What's open at 11, 12 o'clock at night? Because I've been in, and I travel a lot, and I've traveled to a lot of small towns, and I have traveled to small towns where gas stations close at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know. That ain't even what the did it for me. I'll give them the benefit of the I'm doubt. I'm about to Baby say, that one, I, still open. even though I didn't believe none of this story, that part of the story, I give the benefit of the doubt. It's the next part you probably about to say is the part where I was like, bullshit, but go ahead. <laughs> ah. So, on his way to the store, he gets lost, and his car gets stuck. His car gets stuck. Mm -hmm. So, he calls back to the party. Not call Alonzo. Maybe Alonzo didn't have a cell phone. I, I, I they didn't clarify whether or not he had a cell phone. Being that uh, he didn't have a cell phone in his possession when they went through his his um, personal effects after they found him. Okay, so let's just say Alonzo didn't have the cell phone. But he called his so-called friend, Adam. That's all we know. Adam. And tells Adam, hey, can you give Alonzo a ride home? I'm not coming back to the party because I just got lost and stuck. But hold on, the part that he said on Unsolved Mysteries, though, was he said that he had gone 40 minutes in the wrong direction. The so wrong the, direction, yep. So the part that got, the part that, that made me call bullshit, because him getting stuck, whatever. But if you went, if me and you, once again, I leave, and instead of making a left, I make a right. And I go Turn around, 40 go back minutes. I have to come back past the party to get home. Why yep. wouldn't, if you roll with me, see, I guess maybe I came from that mindset of we came together, we leave together. So it's no, again, there's no way in hell that I'm not going to at least stop back past the party and be like, yo, I'm about to go home. You riding with me or are you good? Especially if I didn't talk to you on the phone. And the thing is, 
when he said that, that's when I said, nope, nothing, nope, I don't believe nothing he's saying because that don't make sense. If I went in the wrong direction, that means I, that means that I still have to pass back past the party to go home. He's talking about something, yeah, it was too late to come back. What you mean it was too late to come back? You got to pass back past the party. Right, and the party's still going on. So what do you mean it's too late to come back? I can see if the party had, had ended. And everybody had to went home or went their separate ways or whatever the case may be. But at this point, the party's still going on. So what do you mean it's too late to come back? And that's how after 20 minutes into this drive, you not realize you're going in the wrong direction. I mean, you just literally got there. So you, you didn't pay attention to any landmarks as you were coming into the party. I mean, I, I just don't understand. Oh shit, I'm going the wrong way. Let me let me flip a Yui real quick and go back the opposite direction. And better yet, why go to the store by yourself? Period. Why go to the store by yourself? Period. Hey yo, Alonzo, I don't know where I'm at. Come ride with me real quick. I'm finna ride out right. to the store real quick. They said it was you know, dark. It was like dark roads. No, I mean it was a really rural area. Like it wasn't like oh, I'm you know, like you said, they went like it was a Seven Eleven on every corner or or Dash Mart or. Uh, um, um, what's the other some other gas stations that got that? You know what I'm saying? Wawa, yeah, it wasn't like a Wawa, whatever. Like you are straight up in the middle of nowhere. No Circle K, no none of that. None of no that. No Seven Eleven, like, no Wawa, no, none of that. <laughs> no Quickie Mart, no travel, no travel center, none of that. So, so he calls back to the party. He speaks to this. Um, unknown friend. Apparently, there was a fourth friend that was there at the party that just wasn't mentioned. I don't know. I, apparently, he had his own transportation because he asked Adam to give Alonzo a ride home. And then he even mentions that he heard Alonzo in the background talking shit about him getting lost. Why not ask to speak to Alonzo? Hey, yo, Adam, let me speak to Alonzo real quick. Hey, yo, my, my bad, bro. I got lost. I got lost. Hey, I'm just getting ready to be out. I'm getting ready to head home. You want me to swing by and pick you up on my way home? Or do you want to stay at the party and ride with Adam? Why, to me, you still have not given Alonzo a choice of whether or not to leave or to stay. Because at this point, you're sending a message to him through Adam. You hear him in the background. Why not ask to speak to him and explain to him yourself what's going on? He came to the party with you. He didn't come to the party with Adam. He nope. may not know Adam. You may know Adam. But how are you going to volunteer someone else to give your friend a ride home that you brought there? He's your responsibility at this point. Mm-hmm. And you should be responsible enough to make sure that the friend that you picked up from his house get back home safe and sound. Well, even just so, care enough, like that's my friend. Enough. Like that's my friend. That's my dude. I'm gonna make sure he's straight. You know, hell, I'm drunk. I'm drunk as fuck. I don't got lost. You know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe I need to go get my dude, and we need to be out. Especially, first of all, I would ask to speak to him just to say, hey, everything's straight. Have you and the dude got back into it again? Have y'all crossed paths again? Again, check in and see if everything's straight before you just make that decision to go home, which I just felt like that was bullshit. Y'all drove all the way there and you damn near didn't even stay at the party a whole hour. You leave to go get cigarettes, get lost, and then, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going back home. To me, that was just a waste of the night. So, Matter of fact, I'm going to take back something I just said. I think he did talk to Lonzo before, at least his story is, because Lonzo said he was out of cigarettes too and to get him a pack. So I think in his version of the story, or at least the first version of the story, he did talk to Lonzo. I still don't believe the story, let me be clear, but I want to be fair that he did say, because he said Lonzo was out of cigarettes too, and he was like, get me a pack. I want to be fair, even though I still don't believe the story, but go ahead, I'm sorry. So it's the next day, and... um. It's the next morning. It's the morning afterwards. And I guess someone called to the house um, to ask to speak to Alonzo or is Alonzo home, which I, I, I thought that kind of odd, too, that someone would call and ask, was he home or whatever the case may be, because the mother says, well, he should be home. And she goes to his room and finds out that his bed hasn't been slept in and he hasn't arrived back from the party. So she starts calling around to his friends. Nobody knows where he's at. She ends up calling Rodney, which I feel like this is what activated Rodney. Hey, Rodney, have you seen Alonzo? Rodney says, no, haven't seen him, haven't talked to him. Okay, now he's getting involved. He's concerned enough to drive down to where the party was at to go look for his friend. Right. Versus and the again, friends that actually went to the party with him weren't concerned right. enough 
to just leave and not make right. sure that he was straight before he left. So Alonzo right. meets up with the. I, I I wasn't clear on whether or not all three of the friends went, or if it was just him and Justin that went back to Lacine, and um they started to look for Alonzo. They tried to find out, you know, what happened to Alonzo. Who did he end up leaving with? My question became, oh, they did they did mention to that. They did say that they spoke to Adam or talked to Adam and Adam said that him and Alonzo somehow missed paths. How big was this party? How big was this party? How big, how many people were at this party where, you know, Adam loses sight of Alonzo, Alonzo loses sight of Adam and Adam ends up leaving the party without making sure that the person he just committed to giving a ride home had a ride. I, I, I got lost in that whole transition of events. So they go back to the um, scene where um, Alonzo um, was at for the party and instantly the friend Rodney um, finds one of his boots and a hat across the street from the house where the party was at. Uh-huh. And then there's another boot that's found maybe, you know, about a mile down the road. Mm -hmm. That's odd. Well, okay. All of it, okay. All of it becomes a Twilight Zone situation because going back to what you said, when he called the mom, he didn't say, yo, can I speak to Alonzo? It was, is Alonzo home? Which means that you were worried, even if I believe your story, even if I believe what you said, that means you were worried about whether Alonzo made it home. Correct. Which means that you felt some kind of way about leaving him there, which means you wasn't you sure whether or not he got left back home. him there. Yep. You wasn't sure if he made it back home. So that's right. So then they draw back down. And like you said, the minute they found his boot, that should have immediately been a police report. Like that should have immediately been red flags because who the hell leaves they boot? Who's just and walking I around with one boot on? And a hat. Yeah, like that immediately should have. And, and that, then you now find the other the boot. Police. And then you find the other boot further on down the road. Okay, something right. clearly has happened at this point. And then right. Rodney goes on to say that uh, someone approached them on a four wheeler and told them they needed to leave. Yeah, yeah. And that he felt uncomfortable. Yep. I got to get the fuck out of here. I feel uncomfortable. I don't. Feel he didn't safe. even feel. Un he even felt uncomfortable. When they were there with the cameras doing the show, remember? He was so like, at, I, he was like, yo, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Remember, he even felt uncomfortable then, and he had a whole camera crew with him. Yep. So at this point, I agree with you. They should have went straight to the police department. I don't know if they should have took the boots with them. Uh, part of me feels like they should have took the boots with them in case the person on the four-wheeler would have gotten rid of the evidence or whatever the case may be. But I know in a crime scene, you're not supposed to disturb anything in the evidence or whatever the case may be. But it doesn't seem like any 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 additional details were found with the boot and the hat. But um, right. at and that I'll... point... Go ahead, I'm sorry. At that point, I would have called his family back and told his family what we had found. And I would have immediately... Went to the, police, the police station right now. Yes. I'll be honest with you. I think, and this is going to go, this is going to connect later on when we talk about um, the body or whatever, but I think that tipped them off as far as the people in the house and what did happen. And I do think there was some clean, there was some cleanup that happened. That part didn't, they, you know, they didn't affect, they didn't touch that, but some stuff did go down in my opinion. Once they told the dude, when the dude came out in the four wheeler, like some shit went down at back at that house at that point. Like there yep, was, I agree. There, there was like some, you know, some old shit happened at that point. Yeah, because at that point they realized that people are now looking for him. Yeah. So the mother then begins to call around to the family and let the family know what's going on. She calls her older son, which is Alonzo's brother. Um, Billy and says, mm -hmm. hey, you know, Billy, uh, Billy, in Billy's words, that his mom was frantic, you know, she was upset because Alonzo was missing, you know, and him and his wife decides to go down to Lacine and check things out and find out what's going on. Immediately when they get to the house, the house is vacant. There is no signs that a party has ever taken place that, at this house. And that's the part I'm talking about. They that, cleaned that shit up. That is a red flag. That that many people that were at that party, that there were no 
cups laying around, liquor bottles laying around. Mm-hmm. The house should still be a mess at this point. Mm-hmm. And the crazy part about it is that nobody lived in the house. Right. So is this an abandoned house that they just broke, that someone broke into and decided to have a party here? Okay, is there electricity in this house? I think they said, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think they said that the house was, it wasn't abandoned, like falling apart abandoned, but it was vacant at the time. Like, I think it was a like a rental, like a rental property, but it was nobody living in there at the time. So that's all the more reason, why would you bother cleaning up? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, nobody lives here, right? I mean, I don't know uh, about you when you were a kid, but I know when I was a kid, I had a couple of house parties when my parents were out of town, and I attended some. And, like, if I knew my parents weren't, like, if I had the party Saturday and I knew my parents weren't coming back till Sunday evening, oh, you can come in Sunday morning and you still going to see remnants. Now, by the time they get home, you ain't going to find none, but... I need some sleep before I start cleaning up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, especially, especially a party that size. A party mm-hmm. that size, there's no way they would have been able to clean that party up. With, there's no size of a party. There's no trash bags in Right, because when they said that, when they said no size of a party, I said, oh, hell no. Like, who, who cleaned up the party? You know, at what party, right. at what time did the party, you know, stop? Because at this point, I'm thinking that this party is going on into the wee hours of the morning. We're talking mm-hmm. about two, three o'clock. Party still probably still going. Mm-hmm. You know, so at this point, who cleaned up and removed all the trash? Who got rid? Of- There's nobody spending the night. There's nobody that slept over. You know, everyone just sobered up and left. It, it just this whole party scenario just doesn't seem like it went down the way it was described. And then once the authorities get involved. You know, of course, uh, the typical you must wait 48 hours before you can file a missing persons report. I, I right. would really wish that they changed this law. Because a family member, a spouse, um, uh, anyone who's close to a person knows a person's habits and their movements mm-hmm. and their behavior. So I know that if you come home every day and this is the one time you don't come home and nobody knows where you're at. Nobody has talked to you. Nobody can confirm that they gave you a ride. Nobody can confirm that they dropped you off. I know immediately something is wrong. And I haven't heard from you. You haven't yeah. called. And I guess that, to me, that I guess that's where Justin probably gets, you know, probably a little worried about what's going on at this point because he hasn't heard from Alonzo. Okay? So, at the very least, I would have called Justin back and said, hey, I'm still stranded. I ain't got no way home. Can you come and get me? Right. Yes, I need you to file this police report. I can't wait 48 hours because this is not normal. This is very abnormal. Something is wrong. Whether he's hurt, whether he's... uh, And we're not even talking about foul play at this point. You know, a welfare check at this point. Okay, this is not typical behavior of him. You know, somebody should have heard from him. He would have called somebody. Mm -hmm. Nobody has heard from him. And now his boots and hat are found at the scene of the party. But no Alonzo. Yes. I so are you questioning whether myself. there was even a real party? Like you're questioning because when you say that, that may, are you saying that you don't even think it was like a real party like that? Like the way it's being described, like maybe just more of like a get together or like what are you questioning that part of it? I'm not questioning whether or not it was a real party. I do think that it was a real party. But I what I'm what I'm alluding to at that is that I think somebody else has gotten involved at this point, whether it okay. has been the authorities whether it's been um, maybe somebody's parents. I definitely it's, feel like somebody at that party is connected to the authorities in that town. Like, I definitely feel like... Or some type of city was, official. Or yeah, some I definitely type of city feel official. like... Yeah, I definitely feel like some, of the, who, some kids at that party were connected to, to the right people. Like, I definitely feel that. Somebody would have sent someone... Someone had to send someone there to that house and clean it up. Because... Obviously, someone was in the area still, and this is another oddity, because if the house wasn't inhabited by anyone, if it was a vacant house, where did the four-wheeler, where did the person on the four-wheeler come from? Why were they in the area? Because they said the house was remote. There were no other houses in the area of the house other than the creek. Yes. 250 feet away from the house. Okay, so where did the person on the four-wheeler come from? Why were they there? 
Right. Who were they? Like, like Who you were just coming they? up to me talking about some, I need to leave, dude. I don't know you. What are you talking about? I need to leave. Have you seen my friend? That that would have been my question. Have you seen my friend? Right. Like, we're looking for somebody. Like, did somebody still in that house? Did they spend a night? Did somebody get drunk? Like, you know, that it, it, yeah. And at the very least, if the authorities didn't want to file a missing persons report, they should have at least did a welfare check in the area. Hey, let's call a local hospital. You know, let's make sure that, you know, this person didn't get injured. You know, let's search the area to make sure that was right. Maybe he got hit by a car and knocked his boots off. Like maybe that happened. Could be until we get to the autopsy report. So, well, yeah, but I'm just, but what I'm saying is those are all the scenarios. Like you find somebody's random shoes on the side of the road. Okay. Maybe they, maybe their shoes got knocked off. Maybe they, maybe he tried to right. walk, which is what I think one of the things they said was, well, maybe he was trying to walk home. Okay. Well then where the fuck? Okay. Still, then let's check the, like you said, check the, check the hospital. Do we see any skid marks? Do we see where any remnants of a, of a car accident? Like what in the world? Again, even if I go along with that train of thought, we still need more. We still need something else which show us, or some other evidence which we're show missing. us that. Yeah, we're still right. missing something here. We're missing something real major here. So let me let me double back a little bit because I, I feel like I left the important detail out of that. So uh, the reason why the boost is such a focal point is they had mentioned earlier in the episode that Alonzo had injured his ankle playing basketball. And that he was wearing two pair of socks so that he could um, lace up the boots tighter so he could have more support to walk on his injured ankle. So the whole idea of him walking home, taking the boots off to walk home is just asinine at this point. Right. Because, it would never, the, right. because the family knew that he was already tending to an injury that there's no he needed those. He was wearing those boots for support purposes. So the fact that he doesn't have them on, we know that he's not mobile anywhere walking around and they said it had just rained and that was another thing that was odd okay so did it rain overnight did it rain early that morning whatever the case may be it had rained so all the more reason for remnants of the party to still remain okay it's it's it started raining at this point you know it's nobody cleaning up this house hauling out trash bags or trash in, in the rain you know nobody's going to do that so it's it's just this whole situation is odd and so the authorities get involved. They start doing a the search. Um, they had p- cadaver dogs come in. They had a helicopter come in. They had divers come in, in which they said that the um, the water level in the creek that was adjacent to the property where the party um, was had at wasn't high at the time. It was about three feet. Okay, so they said that they could literally see the bottom of the creek and wade into the creek and, you know, just kind of shipped around in the um, creek with their feet just to see if there was anything in the creek. His body wasn't there. Right. So for about 22 days, his body is is missing. Nobody knows where he's at. And another thing that was odd is, and I know a lot of times in police investigations and crime scene investigations, they don't want family members. They don't want um, non-professional people to be a part of any gathering of evidence or searching for evidence at a crime scene. It's, it's quarantine at this point, you know, they got a crime scene um, group that's going to come in and look for forensics and all those things. So uh, it doesn't really bother me that much that they denied the family, the ability to search for him. Right. Until the day that they do give the family permission to go to the area and look for him. A month all of a later. Sudden with, yeah. A month later to the day almost, almost a month to the day what well, was May the 1st is when the family was allowed to go in and look for him. He went missing on April the 3rd. So almost a month to the day, um, the family is allowed to go in and search for him and within 30 minutes of them searching non-professional people, they find him. They find him in the creek. Mm-hmm. Within 30 minutes of them beginning their search. And Immediately when they find him, they say that there were no signs of injury. There was no signs of decomposition. He was, he had the same color. He wasn't bloated from being in the water. He pretty no much animal looked, activity. No animal activity. So, you know, that was odd. So at this point, you know, he's taken into the coroner's office and the autopsy begins. What I, what I found odd was that they did mention in the autopsy. And even when I went and did further research on the case, there was no toxicology test given. There was no toxicology test given to see if there was any signs of drugs 
mm-hmm. or um, anything that could have possibly poisoned him. So the autopsy results read that there's no penetrating um, signs of injury. So there's no broken bones. There's no bruises. So the cause of death is now undetermined. They can't determine how he expired. So that's an oddity for me because and- if he would have been shot, if he would have been stabbed, okay, we would have saw that through the clothing. Okay. If he would have been beaten um, and beaten severely enough where he would have died from the um, from that beating, there would have been broken bones, mm-hmm. signs of a beating, mm-hmm. you know. So at this point, how was he killed? And that goes back to what I said earlier when I was like, the cleanup. Yeah, I was talking about the physical cleanup as far as the house not having having any remnants of a party, but I'm also talking about that cleanup because his body clearly was on ice somewhere. Somewhere his his body was somewhere like on ice because for there to be no decomp, not, like you said, no animal activity, there's no way his body was out there in the elements. No way in hell his body was out there in the elements. And if his body was still in that house or on that property, somebody had time to get that body away from that house, knowing, oh shit, and something store. might be. So on top of cleaning up physically from the party, you know, the cups and all that, somebody moved that damn body. Wherever the body was, it was moved and it was it was stored. Let me put it that way. It may have even still been, it may have been on that property, but it was stored somewhere. It's the no question- way. That it was in the elements. It's just no way possible. The question even becomes, did he even die that night of the party? The question becomes, yeah. did, did he even die that night of the party? Or was he held captive somewhere and, and, and expired later on? You well, know, we know if he, but if he was, he wasn't tortured. He wasn't tortured. He wasn't but, beaten. So that's kind of why I think that maybe he wasn't killed, that he was killed the night of the party. Because if he was being held all this time, like there was no signs of, anything like it wasn't even like well according to the autopsy report there wasn't even it wasn't even any signs like that he had been tied up or anything not not according again or restrained autopsy report or restrained yes because there would have been um ligature marks um from where he would have been tied um to a chair or tied up somewhere so one of the things that's curious about me was that in the autopsy report they said that they could not um Search the neck where they could not examine the neck area. The neck area had um um was the only area on his body that had severely decomposed. So to me, I feel like that is the obvious sign that he was either strangled uh with a belt or a rope or hung, mm-hmm. choked by hand, that he somehow, some way the cause of death was him him being strangled. You think maybe he was hung? You think he was linked? Possibly. Possibly. It would it would probably it would probably answer the question as to why his boots were probably removed because if he was hung in the tree, maybe trying to kick at someone while he was being um heisted up in a tree mm-hmm. to be hung would probably be an obvious reason why they would remove his boots. Mm-hmm. Um or um, I've I've suffered with the idea that he could have possibly been poisoned. That's what I thought. I thought maybe they put something in his drink or they did something to him and maybe it started off as like a prank but then he actually died. Like that's what I, honestly that's what I thought happened. I thought that maybe somebody put something in his drink like as a prank thinking it would just make him really sick but it killed him. And then it was or, like oh uh, we killed this man. Or my third theory is he could have been kept in a freezer and froze to death. He may have been alive. Him alive. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, it, it would it would it would explain why he was preserved, why his body was preserved. It would explain why none of his uh his his clothing or anything was damaged. You know, even they would have found signs of, you know, a struggle through his clothing. His clothing would have been torn, um, disheveled. Um, it, it could be possible that he was locked in like a meat cooler or somewhere or, or a deep freezer somewhere and left there to die. 
I definitely believe that his body was left was in a freezer. And I believe that the whole time the FBI, because remember, at first the FBI was a part of it. And then the FBI was like, all right, we, it's, we didn't find anything. And then it was kind of left up to the local authorities. But I think that the minute they, I think local authorities were tipped off that they were going to um, allow the family. Um, and I think whoever had that body dumped the body waiting for it to be found. Because at that point, they knew, okay, they're not going to stop until they find this damn body. Correct. So I think that's when they, whoever was holding that body was tipped off, and they knew to drop the body then. Uh, the, another thing that is, 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 is very odd. This whole case is very odd. Um, not being able to determine the cause of death. But then when you start going through his personal effects, you know, he still had money in his wallet. He still had his paycheck stubs on him, his video card, a lighter that was in his pocket. You know, all those things that the mother pulled out on the episode and showed that, you know, this is what was found on him. None of that was damaged. So there's no way in the world he could have been in the water for 30 days and yeah. paycheck stubs and money survived that. Right. You know, this stuff was perfectly intact as if, you know, they might have just taken it. And then the fact that he wasn't robbed of any of that, he wasn't robbed of any of his money or anything like that. You know, I just I don't understand what happened. But then you go back to the events that uh, allegedly happened at the party. You know, you ask yourself, hey, if this is a predominantly white town, everyone, um, going back to the director, I, I listened to a podcast with the director of this episode. Um, um, and the director went on to say that how, you know, filming the episode, he, he's obviously an African-American man as well. He felt um, uncomfortable about the situation as well. Uh, Marcus A. Clark, that's the director. He stated that as an African-American man from Brooklyn, when he went to this town to produce this episode, he too felt uncomfortable being in this area. He did confirm that this was an area that where there were no black people in this area. Mm -hmm. And all the people in the town give you that look like, you don't belong here, leave. Mm -hmm. So... For Alonzo not to feel this, everyone else, even his best friend, after being there with nobody else around other than the person that approached him on the four-wheeler, says, I don't feel comfortable here. How could Alonzo have not felt that vibe? You know, you know, as an African-American yourself, and for people to say that they don't see race and they don't see color, I'm sorry. I, I, I find that a very ignorant statement for but their friends <clears throat> to say. And the reason why I say that is, you know that he's the only black person here at this party. You all yourself says this is a predominantly white town. There's racial slurs being thrown out. There's an altercation. How in the world could you feel comfortable enough to say, hey, I don't see color in this situation and not feel for your friend's safety, knowing that he's the only black guy here. You all brought him here. Let me get my friend out of here for something else pop off. You and know, that's why I asked the question at the very beginning when I said, why did he even go to that party to begin with? Because if you have to, his, his friend Rodney even explained that they knew that was an area they just didn't go to. It wasn't a secret that that town wasn't friendly for them. So they again, weren't right, he said that he was like, I'll, he's like, don't nobody hang out that, like, we know not to go here. So I went, that's what, that's why I even asked that question of you at the beginning. Like, what do you think? Do you think he knew that's where he was going? I mean, I, I don't, I never got the impression that this guy was naive. I mean, I got the impression that, yeah, he had white friends, he had black friends, and but I don't feel like he was naive and didn't understand that he was still black. So it's kind of like, did, did they pick him up and tell him they were going one place and they went somewhere else? Did he think he was going to that other party that all the other friends ended up at? Like, was I it never set thought, up from I the beginning? I never thought about that in that respect and in that respect you could very well be onto something with that because he may not have known where he was going all he knew he was going to a party with justin and his friends and that was going to be that he, i i don't think that he would have willingly went somewhere knowing that he was going to be the only minority in the situation and I, it, it just to me justin is the key I'm not going to say that Justin is partially responsible for his death, but 
part of me feels like he is partially responsible for it. I'm not going to say he was involved in it, but I just feel like his story is fabricated. I feel like um, Justin may have actually happened to Alonzo and, and, and was allowed to leave and come up with this alibi to remove himself from being involved in the situation. I think and, he knows part, more than what he's saying. Part of me feels like all three of the friends are, knew what happened to him. And I think whatever happened to Alonzo happened to him at that altercation. And I, I feel think, like oh, you I think, think it happened at the very beginning? Yes, I think that altercation was the beginning and end of what happened to him that night. I don't think that 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 separation and that altercation just was broke up and everybody went their separate ways and continued to have a good time and then they waited later to jump on him. I think whatever happened at that moment happened right then and there. And I think that the friends witnessed what happened to him and that's why all of them started coming up with these alibis. Let me get the fuck up out of here. Let me come up with an alibi. I, I don't think that he was left at this party alone. I don't think that these friends were not present to see what happened to their friend. I think, well, excuse me, what happened to Alonzo, because I, at this point, I no longer consider them as friends. Um, I, I, I truly do. And if 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 the other two truly did leave prior to anything happening, Justin, at the very least, witnessed what happened to Le- Alonzo, and he came up with this whole cover story so he could remove himself from further scrutiny. You know, it's just convenient that all the friends would happen to have new alibis after all of them get to that party and none of them can uh, speak for what happened after they left the party. It, that's just too convenient for me. And I, I believe that they know more about what happened. I believe they know exactly who and what happened to um, Alonzo. And for them to look at his mother and his family and his sisters and his brother and the uncle and everybody in the family that they showed in the episode. These, these seem like genuinely good people. Reminds me a lot of my family and the love that they had for one another and the love that they had for Alonzo. He was the baby. So, you know, he was their pride and joy. And Mm -hmm. the fact that this family is grieving like this and it's been 16 years and all of a sudden when Unsolved Mysteries, thank God for Unsolved Mysteries, taking this case and opening this case because the the Kansas um, City Bureau of Investigation had already closed the case. They closed the case, said, you know, that Mm -hmm. they they were unable to determine the cause of death. They don't feel like foul play was a part of it. Up the case is closed. 16 years later, when Unsolved Mystery decides to look into this case, all of a sudden now the FBI wants to offer a $100,000 reward and reopen the case and exhume his body. 16 years later, what 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 type of forensic evidence do you really think you're going to find 16 years later? When Well, he's... I don't know how they didn't suspect any foul play. Like, I don't even know how we got to that. Like... I guess because there was no sign of trauma. There was no sign of trauma yeah, on the body, so, so yeah. it, it's, it's very obvious to say that there is no foul play. That's why I go back to why didn't they do a toxicology on him? At that point, if they couldn't determine cause of death, um, why not look and see if he died from natural causes? Did he have a heart attack? Did he have an aneurysm? Um, you know, was there something that coincidentally he had died from natural causes in these these kids at this party freaked out and got rid of his body thinking that, you know, maybe he had alcohol poisoning and overdosed. But he can, um, they can still check for poisoning, though, right? I mean, there's certain things that they can still get in the, out of the tissue, I thought. I, I mean, I'm no, clearly I'm no doctor, but... And I feel I, like that, and I feel like that's part of the reason why his body has been exhumed. And they exhumed his body last month, so hopefully we will be getting an update real soon. On the re- on the new findings of the autopsy, and then let's go back to the uh, the uh, medical examiner. So this medical examiner is not legit. So this medical exa- um, examiner has been investigated uh, for um, shady practices that he's done. Um, really, donating donating people's um, organs without the family's consent. Um, if you do some research on the medical examiner himself, you will find that there's a lot of 
great area where it's concerned with this medical examiner. So uh, I think that's another reason why the body has been exhumed now because they want to um, have an independent person perform an autopsy. And the fact that they did not mention a toxicology just kind of makes me think that they didn't do one on him. And but that's it, why I kept saying, at least according to the autopsy report, at least according, because I don't believe everything that's in the damn report, honestly. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because it doesn't no. make sense. It does not make sense. It does not make sense that a healthy 23-year-old would expire, no signs of trauma, and you not investigate this until you find out what caused his death. I mean, if it was natural causes, then let it be natural causes. Let us find out what what caused his death? Did he have a heart attack? Did he have a stroke? And, you know, with a party this wild, with this many people at, you know, there's tons of alcohol. Could it be possible that he overdosed um, alcohol poisoning with all these drinking games that was going on? You know, could someone have given him a lace blunt? You know, could he have experimented with some other drugs that were there at the party? You know, maybe LSD or um acid or meth or something like that you know god forbid and i hope that isn't the case but i mean you just don't know what what events could have led up to his death and it could very well have been that he was set up by this girl that was allegedly flirting with him maybe she was the one who slipped something in his drink you know Maybe him and the girl went upstairs and they were getting ready to do something, you know, and he got caught in an intimate moment with her. And maybe that's what led to his death. I mean, the fact that, you know, they, a lot of the people that were at the party did not want to be questioned, did not want to take lie detector tests, lawyered up. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to lawyer up when you have the authorities questioning you because your words can be twisted. Your words can be turned around. Um, and you could be committing or answering questions that will make you look guilty based on how they're worded, how they're asked. You know, a Listen. lot of times people are duped into um, giving false confessions just because I, they're ignorant of the law. So I don't I tell think it's my a bad students thing. All the time, I tell my students all the time, you ever get picked up by the police, whether you are innocent or guilty, do not... The only word to say out your mouth is lawyer, and I want my phone call. Don't say nothing. Don't even deny anything. Don't say you weren't there, because you never know the questions they're asking you are tricks. You never know. And so I, I'm with you. I don't have a problem with that either. And that whole, well, if you ask for a lawyer, then you must be guilty. No, fuck that. That's that's a trick that they're playing. It doesn't, it means you're smart. So I, I've never, I, that part, you're right. I'm with you on that one. Like, I don't have no issue with that. I don't have no issue with that. You know, in a past life, I, I, I did um, spend some time in that part of um, the <laughs> world. Um, I went to school for a paralegal. Um, so I've done a lot of um, courses on criminal law, um, business law, and things of that nature. And just looking at how the justice system is, you know, a lot of people are wrongly convicted. And thank God for DNA, because DNA a lot of times do end up resulting in um, exoneration. vindicating and exonerating people that are falsely accused or convicted of crimes. So I think it's in anybody's best interest, guilty or innocent, I think it's in anybody's best interest to have a paid for lawyer, not only just a public defender, because a lot of times the public defender and the district attorneys are they're all in cahoots together and when i say they're in cahoots together they all usually work out of the same district they all usually work out of the same office a public defender is a civil servant that has a caseload that's probably a mile high all the time they don't only defend just you they have a a, a extreme large caseload so Mm -hmm. at the end of the time most of the time they're going to push for a plea they're going to work with the prosecuting attorney to try to get a plea and they're going to try to get you the best option they can for you to do as little jail time probation pre-trial intervention um or as little jail time as possible that's about the only thing that a public defender can do yeah. for you. a public yeah. defender is not going to overwork and underpaid to full overwork and underpaid they're not going to fight for full exoneration for you that's the least and they can good. do for you is to get you a, a, a small deal that's going to give you the least amount of jail time as possible. 
Yeah, and I think people paintball. underestimate how expensive. I mean, we we kind of went left, right, but I think people underestimate how expensive a good defense is. Like getting, you know, forensic reports and independent studies and investigate. Like autopsy, that stuff right. is expensive and. A public defender, they could be the best attorney in the world, but if they don't have the resources to do a full investigation, they they just don't. It just they just don't. And that's and like you said, the best they can do sometimes is to try to get the best deal. Not because they're bad lawyers or because they're just looking for the easy way out. They don't have the resources. That's 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 that that's the extent of their resources that they're gonna allow them to do. They're gonna advocate for you on behalf of you to give you the best deal um, possible that's going to keep you out of jail the least amount of time. They don't have resources to have independent forensics and investigators and, and all those things. They don't have the time. And uh, another thing is they don't have the time to do a full-scale investigation. You know, most trial dates are set a year to date. So within a year, they have to mount a defense for you. They got to go to the pretrial motions for you. And most of it is just filing paperwork on behalf of you but the, mm -hmm. the, the nitty gritty of it is investigating and subpoena people and, and witnesses and witness statements and investigating people. We're talking about hundreds of people that was allegedly at this party. There's no way in the world a public defender would have been able to uh, launch a full scale investigation independently to find out what happened at this, at this party. And again, so for, I'm going back to what you were saying earlier or what we were both saying earlier. I fully believe that the kids at that party or the people, not so much kids, but the people at that party, they're connected to the right people. So on yeah. top of all of that, they're going to be roadblocks that are going to be intentionally thrown in their way in my mind. Yeah, because the fact that the party was just cleaned up, there's no signs of a party. The family members are not getting any answers. They're calling the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department's like, look, stop calling. We'll call you for an update. And most of the time, most police officials are going to tell you that when they're in the course of an investigation, like, look, we don't have any updates. If we have any updates, we'll call you and let you know. But I think in this case, you know, we could have a political official child that was at that party, maybe the mayor of the town, um, police chief, sheriff, whatever the case may be. I, I do believe that some of the party go to some city officials at that party. And those city officials use resources to clean that house and, and dispose of that body or store that body and would have had the resources and means to store that body outside of that location. And then conveniently, when the family was allowed to come in, if they would have found him a day or two afterwards, okay, yeah, but the same day that they're, they're released to go search for him, they find him means that he was dumped that morning right before they and came. remember the FBI and remember the FBI agents was like we searched that creek like there was nothing in that creek because remember that was and, the FBI that was saying that like no 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 <laughs> and I no. felt like I felt like his friends would have found him the, the morning after I felt like his friends would have if they found the yeah. boots in the hat they would have found him as well so the fact he was not out there he was not out there for 30 days he was not out there but I guess we can go ahead and wrap up this episode. Um, if anyone, if anyone, anyone has any information that can lead to the arrest and conviction of the responsible party or person um, of this death, please just contact your FBI, your local FBI, your local police. Um, there's tip lines. There's, I mean, if you go out here and search Alonzo Brook on online, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that's out there. There's a Facebook page. There's all types of stuff out there that can probably lead to helping get some justice for the family. My heart goes out to this family and, um, you know, I pray for them that they've had to grieve for 16 years without any resolution to what happened to their child, their brother, their friend. And as far as the friends are concerned, I think that's y'all first. I, I think that's your first and last stop that these friends need to be dug into a little deeper. Their stories just don't mash up well to me. It's very dubious. Because didn't um, uh, the other guy, didn't he change his story? Like, it's like a different, like, two different versions of his story now. Like, now he's not Justin. saying that he got lost. He's saying that the car got stuck. Like, it's just, yeah, like, his story has changed a couple of times. But if you go back and you really watch the episode with Justin, at first, he, he talks about the altercation, and then he goes on to say in the next scene, 
oh, everything was good. Everybody was having a good time. You know, everybody was playing flip cup. You know, we were taking shots or whatever. And I just, uh, to me, you, you, you're you telling me that you two were the only people at that party that smoked cigarettes. There was nobody else at, at the party that you could have bummed a cigarette from without you having to leave the party to go get a cigarette. Did you not know that you were low on cigarettes when you got to the party? Like, why didn't y'all stop by the store on the way to the party? I felt right. like at some point they stopped by the store anyway because he came with beer. I don't feel like he left with beer to go to the party. I don't feel like he left home with a case of beer to go to the party. So I felt like somewhere along the way, on the way to the party, he stopped and got the case of beer. Right. And a smoker, and a smoker knows. That's just like me. Listen, I don't go to work every day without stopping by the gas station and getting me a pack of cigarettes. And I work down the street from a gas station. My daily routine. Hey, when I leave out, I look at my pack. Hey, I'm I'm low on cigarettes. I'm going to stop by the store and get me a pack of cigarettes and a Red Bull before I even right. get to work. So and I, I smoke be- I smoke black and miles and I know what I have in the house. Like, okay, I'm not going like especially with this COVID, I know, okay, I'm not leaving the house for another couple of days. Let me get everything I need while Let I'm out. Up. And that's definitely something I make sure I have before I get in the house. That's just like going to the club back in the day when you were allowed to smoke in the club. You know, you could oh, smoke you, in the club. Oh you, oh, you could smoke in the club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> I have. I remember them days where you could smoke in the club. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, yes, we used to be able to smoke in the club. And no matter where you went, I remember when you'd be able to smoke in the restaurant. <laughs> I remember That's when smoking. you went to the restaurant and they would be like, do you want smoking or non-smoking? Like, I remember yep. that being a yep. question. <laughs> I mean, even, even hotel the simple... rooms. I remember hotel rooms were smoking or non-smoking. I remember when the planes, I remember when you used to be able to smoke on a plane when they had the little ashtrays yeah, plane, if you, you get smoke. on an old enough plane, that's how you know you're on an old ass plane if it's still got an ashtray on it. Yep, if it's still got an ashtray on it. Yep, cars, everything. But I remember even yep. going my first simple car things like going to the ashtray. casino. When I go to the casino, I'm not buying no cigarettes at the casino. They're like ten dollars a pack. I'm not buying no cigarettes at the club. They're like ten dollars a pack. So I'm going to make sure I have what I need before I get to my destination. So if mm-hmm. I'm going to a party and I know that I smoke, hey, yo, Rob, stop me by the store. I need to get a pack of cigarettes. You know, right. it, I, I get it. They're 23. You know, they have the mindset of a 30 year old right. or whatever the case may be. But it, it just that whole cigarette thing is just an oddity. Like I me. said, we're left. Like I said, where it lost me that that part of it, but the part where he was like. Well, I had realized that I had gone 40 miles in the other direction. And by that time, it was just too late. So I went home. And I'm thinking, but then that means you had to pass back. You Like, if you went left instead of right, that means you had to go back past the damn party. Like, I didn't, especially, you're going to tell me you weren't familiar with the area, but you were familiar enough to know an uh, alternate route home that didn't take you past the party. And we're talking about, I mean, 2004 and... I vague. I hate to say this, but I vaguely can remember 2004. But I mean, I know at 99, I had a cell phone full time. Um, I know from like 95 to 98, I, I, did. You I, I carried a pager. I, I had a but, pager, but I didn't at, at 90 because I, I remember when I got my first cell phone, and it was probably. Let me think. I moved back to. I moved back to DC in 99. I know I did not have a cell phone when I moved back to DC. I'm thinking maybe for Christmas that year, I got a cell phone or Christmas the next year. I didn't have one when I, I didn't, I'm, let me say this. I did, I know I had one in 2000, but I didn't have one in 99. And I'm thinking maybe December of 99 is when I got my first cell phone. It was a Christmas gift. I know by 2004, I had me a full time. Oh, yeah, by 2004. (laughs) Oh, yeah, by 2004, I had a cell phone. Yeah. But it could be, it could be that Alonzo didn't have a cell phone at the time. I mean, I'm not going to say this was a depressed area, but I I think this was a little small town area. So, you know, you know, maybe everyone didn't have cell phones at that time. But I guess my question is, how did you get to the party? You know, where, what were you using? Were you using a Tom Tom? Were you using? Apple Maps, Google Maps. I mean, what? Remember when you said to use? Remember you had to print out your directions from MapQuest? I remember MapQuest. <laughs> I had a tall tall though. <laughs> I, had a tall, tall. I remember Tom Tom. My um, my, you know, my parents they travel, but they you know they had a they had a motorhome, and I remember when they got their motorhome and it had like navigation was part of the new. I was like, oh look at this, it's, it's included. And but before that they had one. Remember you had they had the little bag and. All yep. of that, like I remember that. I remember having the navigation system. I think I had one. I'm almost certain I had a navigation system. 
But, but another anyway, oddity about about the um, whole story is how did the car get unstuck? Okay, if you were if you were traveling to the store by yourself, how did you get the car unstuck by yourself? Now, if you would have said that I spent forty five minutes trying to get my car unstuck, I would have I would have believed that better than you riding around for forty five minutes and then got your car stuck. All that just conveniently happened. You know, at this point, I would have called for Adam to come and get me. Hey, Adam, can you and Alonzo come down here and help me get my car unstuck? I'm stuck. I'm lost. Can y'all come get me? But you call back to tell them that your car is stuck, but you didn't call them to ask to come for help. So if that would have been me and you, and for God, for, for God, God forbid, for whatever reason, I felt comfortable enough to leave you there, and then I got lost or stuck after I had left you, I would have called back and say, hey, Chris, can you in um, Paris or can you in um, Juggernaut or can you in Fresh or Jack come and get me? You know, I'm stuck. I'm going to need y'all help mm-hmm. with my car unstuck. Like, so you just sat here and dig your car out by yourself in the middle of nowhere, in the middle right. of the night? Right. And you still well, didn't accomplish anything that you left for. You didn't get the cigarettes. So it just it's just strange. It's, it's really strange. The whole thing is, and I'm hope I'm with you. I hope that you know, with this new attention on the case, that it might just put some pressure. You know, uh, a lot of times, and we talked about this before, because both again, both of us love true crime. You know, another show I really love is Cold Case, and you'll be surprised at the smallest thing that will crack open a cold case. And with so much attention now, like everybody who was at that party is older now, and maybe they feel differently. Maybe they're guilty. Maybe there have been some things that have been weighing on them and, and, and they finally going to tell somebody like something, you know, so many people know what happened that aren't, they just aren't who they were 12 years ago. You know and what with I mean? that I'm, kind of money on the table for a reward, we're talking about a hundred K that that's yeah, a that lot too. of motivation for someone to speak Especially up. Especially in an area that, you know, ain't the richest area in the world. Like it's definitely some motivation. But I'm thinking, I'm going to be honest, if I had to guess, I'm thinking it's going to be somebody who was at that party is going to is going to tell it. And even if it's not, they don't know the whole story, but they know a little bit more. And then that leads to a little bit more. And then that leads to a little bit more. But I'm, I, I believe that's what's going to end up happening. I don't think the autopsy is going to be the smoking gun. I think somebody is going to say something. At the and very least, they, where he had been stored at. For those yeah. 30 days. If and we can find out tell... where he's been stored at for those 30 days, maybe we can find some DNA or some right. forensics right. or something. <laughs> and then can... Even if they don't tell, like the authorities, they told somebody who's going to tell the authorities. You know what I'm saying? A like, spouse or a hate to, I hate to throw my fe- I hate to throw my women under the bus, but I can, def- I can, I can easily see a woman telling their... Um, I can see a woman telling their husband. And you know what I'm saying? I can definitely see it being a situation like that. But I'm going to tell you, I think that's what's going to happen. I think, I, I think we're going to, at least I have hope, but I think it's, I think, I think um, I'm about 80% sure that we're going to get resolution with so much new information. I mean, so much new attention, so much new information. Somebody is either going to feel guilty enough or embarrassed enough that they're going to tell what happened. Again, remember, these were teenagers. They were, you know, the kids were, you know, in their early teens, I mean, late teens, early 20s, and they're in their 30s now. Families, kids of their own, they just have a different mindset, I think. And somebody, I think, is going to say something. And out of all the friends that were um, shown on the Unsolved Mystery, with the exception of Rodney, um, Justin seems to be the most one that's wearing. You could you could almost see it. You could almost see it on him. He he's he's keeping a secret. If it's you tip even, him over, yeah, he. I think he's ready to talk. I think, but I also think he's scared. I think he's yep. scared. Yep, yep. And it and it and it clearly seems that these people have not left this area. They're still here. They're still there. Right. And that that and that's another thing that I would have thought would have been you know a catalyst to change that you know they no longer live here in this area anymore you know they moved on they have kids and family of their own you know and they're worried about this could happen to my child karma is a bitch you know yeah but it seems but like it's, it's gonna be somebody that this... moved away i think i would say it's gonna be somebody that moved away i agree I, I, but to me it looks like they're still stuck here in time like they're still yeah. here. They've grown up here over the years, and this is a terrible secret to keep over the years. And you can just see the guilt, 
the hurt, the anguish, the frustration. I, I don't know if it's remorse that we see in Justin, but, you know, just looking at him, you can tell that he's wrestling with this situation. And I don't know if it's because he knows more and he, out of guilt, he probably needs to say more, but there's fear that what's going to happen when I do? Am I going to spend the rest of my life in jail? Is my family going to be in danger now? Um, because I've read online where he's received death threats. He has, um, so he's the target of everyone's suspicion. And um, rightfully so, I mean, even if he is innocent, I'm sorry, but his behavior has put him at the forefront of being a person of interest for me. Uh, and I'm sure that law enforcement is leaning on him very heavily as well because uh, you were the person that rode with or took him to the party and you were the last friend that was left at the party that left him there. And by your own admission of what supposedly happened at the party, you know, the first question that I would ask him was, why the hell did you leave him? If you knew that that he was in a, a uncomfortable situation with the race thing, why would you even leave your friend there to defend himself and fend for himself being the only black person. I've heard that he's the only black person there. And then I've heard that he's one of three black people that was there, but then you haven't heard any of the other black people come forward. And see, that's another thing that's odd to me as well, because if there were other black people at that party, let's just be honest and we can say this, but if there were been other black people at that party, you don't think they would have flocked to him? Yeah, I, I think that if there were other black people at this party, they would have flocked to him. At the very least, oh, we're not the only ones anymore. They would yeah. have, they would have made friends with him. They would have interacted with him. And if that's the case, yeah. where are they at? Why haven't yeah. they been questioned? How did you all feel at the party? Yeah, uh, did you all notice there were any racial tensions or anything <clears throat> at the party? So. Part of me doesn't believe that there were other black people at that party. I believe that he was the only black person there at that party. I think that people are trying to make it sound like what it really wasn't. I think people are trying to say, oh, yeah, there were other black people at the party. So to kind of mask the fact that, no, this was a predominantly white area. No black people are not welcome here in this area. And any black person there at that party was probably in the same situation that Alonzo would have was in. Uh a target of racial slurs and uncomfortableness of being the minority mm -hmm. at the party. There were no other black people at that party. If they are, I need for them to come forward and speak about what, how they experience was at that party and why they didn't interact with Alonzo. Because we all know when we are a situation and we are the only minority, when there's another minority that shows up, you're going to become friends with that person. You're going to interact with that person. You're going to flock to them. Mm -hmm. If I'm the only mm -hmm. black person at work and we hire another black person at the job, we're going to automatically have a relationship. Just because we're no longer the only, I'm no longer the only black person there. Right, wrong, or indifferent, uh, by nature, by human nature, we are going to flock to our own kind. And I'm not mm. trying to be racial. I'm not trying to say that, you know, black people click up and click together, it would have been the same effect if there was an all black party and there were other white folks there at that party. They would Yeah, have... you find you find your people. You find your people. Yes. Right. At the very least they would have they would have had a, a, an exchange. Yo, what's up? How you doing or whatever. They would have at some point in that party, they would have hung together at some point at that party. Especially if they knew that it was an altercation that ju um, jumped off with one other black person. At that party, to me, they would have instantly clicked up. They would have interacted with each other. And the fact that there there has been no other black people that have came forward and say that they attended the party, uh, no, it wasn't a racial type of situation, you know, we felt comfortable there, tells me that that's a lie as well. There were no other black people at that party. Alonzo was the only black and Mexican person there, and he was immediately a target as soon as he walked in that door and for yeah. his friends to leave him knowing that he was being accosted because of the fact that he was black they are shitty ass friends and I hope that they hear this podcast I hope any of them press my Instagram or Facebook you can hit my phone y'all shitty ass friends 
because y'all never should have left that boy there by himself. And now that he's dead and gone, y'all sitting here trying to piece together what happened 16 years ago. What should have happened was y'all should have left his ass at that fucking party. Facts. All right, let's get ready to wrap it up. So what's the if, if people do want to uh, uh, comment on the podcast, add any insight, opinions, you agree with us, you disagree with us, what, what's, what's the, uh, how can they leave a message for us? Uh, so on Anchor, retro? on Anchor, they can um, leave us a voice message. Um, if you want to contact us on our social media, you can send us a DM to um, TSF Entertainment, um, or you can email us at info at tsfentertainment.com. Um, and if you have any details regarding, please contact your local law enforcement and um, FBI. And let's try to see can we get this case solved, guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later. All right. Have a good one, y'all. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app and go to Anchor FM to get started. You are now listening to TSF Entertainment Podcast.